Let's start with how you were recruited to work out there, what they told you you were going to do, or what they didn't tell you what you're going to do, and what did you actually do? Starting at the end. My name is Bob Rodert. Uh, I'm kind of alone up here in that um, I'm one of the guys that helped uh, kick the tires and light the fires on the airplane. But um, I, uh, I went to UCLA and uh, went to work for Lockheed Burbank uh, in about 1960. And in uh, the middle of 61, a uh, boss of mine got recruited into the Skunk Works, which is a, a part of Lockheed uh, Burbank. Uh, it's headed by Kelly Johnson and a team of people. But Anyhow, my boss got recruited into the Skunk Works, and uh, he just went away. He said, hey, I'll see you guys later. And a uh, week or so later, we'll, uh, I got a phone call from him that said, uh, you want to come over and join me? And I said, what are you doing? He said, I can't tell you, but it's pretty good. And so bottom line is uh, I had been working on Electras and F-104s, and I'm an aeronautical, aeronautical engineer. So any of this stuff was like great toys, and I love to fly. And so he said, come on over, go pick up a badge, and report for duty. I uh, got a badge, just a little round thing this big that you'd pin to your shirt with some pictures on it. And I was allowed to walk through the door of a hangar that was built in A-12s. It was uh, obviously very secure because it worked, but I'll never forget the day that I walked through that door. There was a guard there that just looked at my picture badge. And I walked in, and it was like Jules Verne. <laughs> there were airplanes in that hangar getting built, all different stages. Nobody met me at the door. And uh, I walked up to a mezzanine, and, and I got introduced. I got a little tour of it. But I had no idea up to that point what was going on at Lockheed. Everybody wanted to know, of course, all over Burbank and all over L.A., what's going on in that uh, skunk works, because there were cars parked out there, and there were Connies coming and going all day long. But uh, they kept the secret very well. Six months later, after I got my clearance, um, I just got a chit that said you can climb on a Connie at uh, 7 in the morning, and nobody told me where I was going. I just uh, climbed on. They said you're going to come back on Friday or Saturday and say goodbye to everybody and, uh, you know, go to work. Um, the, we initially had one Super Connie operating out of Burbank, flew into the area every morning, came back every night. Uh, and so I, uh, I'll never forget the first flight. We just took off from Burbank and flew kind of a dynamic profile that took us up over uh, the, the uh, hills next to Burbank and up to about 10,000 feet or so, and then we started letting down. Next thing you know, I'm touching down on a runway that looks like it goes forever. And uh, I had no idea that this place existed or where I was going, but... Um, I was met by a security guy at the other end and said, come with me, son. Took a picture of me, gave me a badge, and I went to work. It was Area 51, and uh, the airplane, which is Article 121, had just made its first flight. So this was in about April of 62. Uh, there was a lot of talk about how it was flying. The first flight was an accident. The second flight was on a purpose, uh, but it was actually up and flying on the, uh, the J-75 engines. Uh, I went to work on instrumentation, so the, uh, the guy that I was working for and I were in charge of all of the instrumentation on the first article, which meant that we had hundreds if not thousands of measurements, big bundles of wire, and, and, a, and a, what was called a cube, which is where the uh, photographic payload eventually went, was full of recorders. And uh, we basically were in charge of uh, kicking the tires and lighting the fires as far as instrumentation was concerned. So every flight that came back, we had to download all of the data, uh, process it through photographically, and send it to Burbank uh, on the next shuttle. So the bottom line is I was out there for about uh, two, two and a half years. I had an opportunity to go to Edwards when LBJ announced the uh, YF-12 program. And so he released that to the public. And I went to Edwards, got married, I spent a year or so we, we flew the YF-12 on some incredible missions. I know that's kind of off the table a little bit here, but the YF-12 did start out there at uh, Area 51, and um, it, was, it turned out to be an excellent interceptor. Very few people knew about it. It was not really classified, but we were, we were flying it uh, just as a separate project, but with just a typical mission for the YF-12, and then I'll shut up. But uh, uh, we would uh, tow the thing out of the barn at about 6 in the morning, kick it loose, it'd probably be airborne by 7 or 7.30 with a missile loaded up in a missile bay, 
it would fly across the U.S., get a, a refueling over Texas, as I recall, uh, go across the rest of the U.S. and launch against a drone out over the Atlantic Missile Range, which was off of Florida. He'd turn around, pick up another drink over Texas, and be back on the, hang back on the ground and in the hangar by noon. <laughs> so that's what that airplane would do. And we had several direct hits. Uh, the thing that makes you a little bit, um, I guess, aware of what the politics were, uh, a fellow by the name of McNamara was our Secretary of Defense at the time, and he had an airplane that was called F-111, and his 111 was supposed to do everything for everybody, and uh, we proved that uh, it couldn't do anything, and we had an airplane that was excellent. They had worked the bugs out. The missile and the radar had been developed by Hughes for the F-108. McNamara was not sick yet. Well, he's the one that canceled. No, no, oh, okay. I'm sorry. The guy that canceled it was uh, his successor. Okay. I was on the sorry. project. So yeah, okay. Well, and, and then we've been cussing out the wrong guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he might have had a cut, that, too. Uh, Kelly got kind of tweaked by that whole process, and as we understand it, he cut up the tooling for the airplane, and so there was never going to be any more of them built. So, at any rate, I was a happy young engineer. I wanted to get out of the desert, so after a year or so at Edwards, I moved up to Sunnyvale, ended up working on several more Skunk Works programs because I knew the guys and I had the clearances, and uh, mm -hmm. we did some things uh, still out at Area 51 that, as far as I know, I'm not supposed to talk about. But anyhow, ah, come on. It, it, was, it, was a, <laughs> it was really a great place to work. Uh, I didn't realize how exciting the, the project was in terms of technology for probably a few more years because it was all titanium. It had fluids and wires, and uh, the whole airplane was basically invented from the ground up. And uh, the people that, that made it work were excellent. And you know, it starts with the, the people back at uh, ADP, Skunk Works, but included the folks at Pratt & Whitney and Ham Standard, and just an incredible team of people. And Kelly Johnson at the top of it was a tyrant, but sometimes that's what it takes. You've got to be, be, be able to yell and scream and be heard down the hall but he made people get the job done, and uh, that's what can happen if you have a person like Kelly leading the pack. So anyhow, that's how I got on it, and, uh, and I've been a nice 40-year program uh, as a systems engineer. Thanks, Bob. Thank General Sullivan.